blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord, our God. He's our God. And if he is your God, then we ought to be entering into the house of the Lord with thanksgiving. Is there thanksgiving in your hearts on this morning? Oh, come on and stand to your feet and hear these words from Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2, which will be our call to worship. And I want you, as I read these words, to hear how they pertain to your life and relationship with the Lord your God. Amen. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exalt you, Lord. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Oh, does that, does that psalm ring into your spirits on this morning? Does anybody have an I will praise for the Lord your God on this morning? The I will is a word of pressing. Oh, we don't always feel like pressing into the presence of the Lord. We don't always feel like praising. But it's our will that we must praise the Lord. For God is good. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. Oh, he's been a good God. He's never left us. Neither has he forsaken us. And so our will, we must press. Our will is to praise. Our will is to thank God for all that he's done. So please do enter into the Lord, the house of the Lord, excuse me, with thanksgiving. Be grateful and thankful unto him for, the God's, for God's presence is in this place. And it is our responsibility to acknowledge him for all that he's done in our life. Amen. We're going to enter into prayer and then we will receive our service of baptism. Is anybody excited about that on this morning? <laughs> Baptism. Amen. We have two candidates, I believe, that will be baptized on this morning. And I want to say that I have watched the candidate that we have this morning just be so excited about what God has done in her life. And she's invited all of her family. She put, put a post out on Facebook because she's not ashamed of the change that has been taking place in her life. And so this is how we ought to be showing God our thanksgiving. That's the I will. I will show forth my thanksgiving unto the Lord because God has done great things in our lives. Oh, what a wonderful change that has been taking place in the hearts of men. And we ought to rejoice. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you. God, we extol you on this morning. God, we reverence your holy and your righteous name. God, we will forever be grateful, Lord God, for you are always with us. Your presence, Lord God, we just, we adore it. And so, God, we invoke your Holy Spirit on this morning that you will do what you want to do, Lord God. That our eyes will see the miraculous work of, of, of your hand. God, that our ears might be attuned to the word, Lord God, that is life-changing. That it will enter into our hearts, Lord God, and settle there, Lord God. That we might be the example of your son, Jesus. So, God, do what you want to do on this morning. Get us out of the way, Lord God. So, Lord God, we submit to your authority and your will. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the people of God said amen and amen. Please look at the screens. Um, I guess intimate family members may want to come around. I don't know if they're able to, on the screens, follow the direction on the screens. Amen. The word of God says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The word of our Savior. Saints and candidates, 
You come now to this, the water. You receive a water baptism. We pray that God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, would grant you full release from Satan and this world by his power because you have repented of your sins and accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Ocean Blue Lattimore, because of your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Continually separate. Come on and put your hands together. Praise God. Come on and put your hands together. As we receive our choir, put your hands together. Continue to God praise. As we, as we are waiting on our choir to get in place, I do want to share that um, this month, the month of October, is a Pastor's Appreciation Month all over the country, not just here at Basil Creek. And so I just wanted to um, just put it in your hearing. This is not a requirement at all, but pastors do so much. They're the guardians of our souls. And so if you can, send a text message, a card, or show some kindness to our pastor during this month. Um, and it's also his birthday month, okay? So um, I just wanted to just put that in your, in your hearing. It's not a requirement at all, but we as people of God, we do honor those that have guardianship over our souls. And so I just wanted to just invite you all to show a bit of kindness.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God the praise in here this morning. If you were able to come in this morning, you got something to be glad about. Give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. We are glad. I stand before you this morning to read the scripture. Our scripture lesson today, if you want to um, open up your Bibles and mark it, comes out of John 15, begin with, beginning with verse 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants. For the servants does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You do not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and hear and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the father in my name, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. These things I command you that you so that you may love one another. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we come this morning with bowed heads, humble hearts, and open ears. Awaiting a word from you, Lord. In a chaotic world, chaotic lives, don't know what to do from one day to the next, we come before the everlasting God, humbly asking to rest among us in this place, God, that we might feel your presence, that we might offer up the praise to you, Lord. For we need you. We love you. We want to be in your presence, God. Help us, God, to praise you. Because if we had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough. Help us to stay humble. Love one another as you have just told us in your word. Because you so loved us that you gave your only begotten son that we might have life and life everlasting. Oh, God, hear I cry this morning. Remember the bereaved families, those in the hospital beds, God. There's someone passing right now, God. Put your loving arms around their family, God, for they need you, God. We can't make it without you. We can't do it without you. And you said if we call on you, you will hear our cry. No matter where we are, you said if we make our bed in the pits of hell, you'll be with us all there as well. Be with us now, God. We give you honor this morning, and we give you praise. We can't give you glory because glory is already thine. Oh, Father, hear us this morning, Lord. Somebody needs you this morning, God. Go behind the prison walls, God. Touch those, God. Show them that you love them, God. They might not have gone the way that you would have them to go, God. But you love them, God. Help us to do the same, God. Remember those that have gone astray. And help us to walk before them that they may want to turn around, God. Hear our cry this morning, God. Hear those families living on the street, God. Help us, Lord, to do more for the homeless, God. Help us, God. We bring in people from other countries and give them whole neighborhoods, God. But we let our own people live on the street, God. Hear our cry this morning, God. 
our hearts are heavy for one from God. That one God that don't know you in the pardon of the sin, God. Our hearts should be heavy for that one, God. Help us, Lord, that we might be able to be your light in a dying world. Hear our cry, God. We need you. If we, you guide us, if you guide us, and we be obedient to follow, we can do great things. Because you said we can do all things through Jesus Christ. This is our prayer this morning. Bless our leader, his family. Bless this church, our church family. Every household is represented here, God. Bless it in a mighty way. Pour out favor, God. Yes, God. Pour out the favor. Somebody need favor today and don't even know it, God. Pour it out, God. And then let them remember that the cry went up to you. Let them remember that the cry went up to you. You heard the cry in Jesus' name, and you did it. This is our prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, all of those who love the Lord. Come on, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. On this beautiful morning, what a wonderful day to be baptized, amen? Come on, if you're happy for the expansion of God's kingdom, you ought to stand on your feet and give God some praise in this house. Come on and celebrate with the heavenly host. Come on and celebrate with the whole body of Christ. We thank you, Lord. Yeah, come on and help the choir sing this. Come on, lift up your voices if you can. Oh, God. Oh, how we worship. Yes, God. 
Accept us, our worship, Lord. Accept our sacrifice of praise, God. For in this moment, there's nothing more precious than your presence. There's nothing more important than your love. God, we worship you, Lord. Not out of formal fashion, God. Not out of religion and tradition, but out of relationship. For your love is worthy, God. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way. Thank you, God, that baptism is only a symbol of death, God. And death no longer has the final say, God. We thank you, Lord. Yes, oh God. We thank you, Lord. Ah, just give him a wave offering. Come on, just give God a wave offering. Sometimes words can't capture. Words cannot acknowledge. Sometimes just holy lifted hands and bowed heads for you are worthy God there's none like you and every believer said amen, amen. come on only believers amen. amen and then everybody else come on and put your hands together amen. thank you Jesus thank you Lord you may have your seats if you're able, for God is truly worthy. Amen? Yes. Amen. Come on and give each of you all a look at how beautiful we are. Look around you today. You ought to look at someone and say, good morning, in the mighty name of Jesus. Good morning. Come on, doesn't it feel good to say good morning? Good morning. Amen. Amen. We welcome each and every one of you all to our service here at Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church. For those of you all who have pressed your way out to join us in person, those who are joining us on our Facebook Live and the conference call, we greet you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. You all, it's the first Sunday in October. It's October 1st. Y'all know what that means. That means we're going to sing some happy birthdays to some folks out here. If you're a birthday baby in the month of October, I want you to stand on your feet. Come on, Eileen. It's just me and you. Oh, oh, I see some more. There we are. Say, don't be mad. Don't be mad at us. It's just the time of the year we were born in. We can't help it. But happy birthday to each of you October babies. Before we continue on, it is our tradition that we sing to you happy birthday. So at this time, receive the choir. October babies, make it good. Happy birthday, all you October babies. Happy. Amen. And amen again. October is a special month, amen. So many things that we celebrate, not only pastor's birthday, but um, there's, there's some other, other very, very uh, needed things that we need to acknowledge during the month of October. One, October is Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Awareness Month, amen. Amen. This is, this is an evil that has plagued 
every community for generations. And it's going to take a community and generations to stand up against violence. Amen. Amen. If you want to stand up against violence, come on and just shout amen. amen. Come on. If you see something, you're going to say something. Amen. 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 We will not tolerate violence and sexual abuse in God's kingdom. Amen. amen. Also, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Amen. Man, we want to make sure that we, one of the best ways we can show love to one another is by being safe, being compassionate, but also taking care of one another. Amen? Amen? And the way we take care of one another is by taking care of yourself. You got to love yourself. We were talking about that in Sunday school this morning, right? Jesus gave some commandments, and he said to love God with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, every fiber of your being, but to love your neighbor as yourself. You got to love yourself, beloved. So we want to make sure that we are loving ourselves and loving others by being aware of all the ills that can bring us calamity and suffering. We're going to prepare for our announcements. And directly after our announcements, we're going to have the presentation of our certificates for baptism and new membership. Amen. So at this time, please prepare your hearts and your minds for what thus saith the Lord in our announcements. Good morning, Bells Creek Church family and friends, and welcome to our service. We are, are so glad you decided to join us today. Sunday, October 15th is Pinktober at Battle Creek. The Women's and Health and Wellness Ministries are partnering together and encouraging everyone to turn on the congregation pink in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Have you had your monogram this year? Our very own Reverend Patterson will be the keynote speaker for the Wake Johnson Men's Fellowship Annual Banquet on Saturday, October 21st. The banquet will begin at 6 p.m. Tickets are $15 each. See Deacon Izzard for more information. We will have Children's Church on Sunday, October 22nd and Sunday, November 12th. We are also planning our annual form outing for Sunday, October 28th. More information to come. All ministries are asked to elect officers during the month of October. Sunday school is held in the Fellowship Hall from 8.30 to 9.15 every Sunday morning. Reverend Patterson's office hours are Tuesdays, 5 p.m., 8 to 8 p.m., Fridays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Saturdays by appointment. Bible study is held on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. via Facebook. And? And our conference line on the second through fifth Wednesday, Bible study is held in person? person on the first Wednesday of the month with a focus on grief support. Our main telephone conference line is 605-562-8401, access code 220-6554. You can meet us on the conference line for prayer on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. The Outreach Ministry is asking each member to bring a food donation on the first Sunday of the month. Our food market is held every first Saturday of the month and the Aussie Stinson Fellowship Hall located on the lower level. Your giving prayers are needed and most appreciate. Giving can be done through the collection plate at the back of the church US mail PayPal via our church website or drop off on Sundays. Blessings, Blessings to, to each one of you. Stay, stay strong, strong, stay focused, and trust God. Amen. And thank you for those announcements. At this time, I'm going to call forth our baptismal candidates who were baptized this morning. Come on up front if you will. 
to ask you to visit with your certificates. Come on, let's welcome them. Come on, may I get a hand? Come on, we can continue to celebrate. Y'all may have. Woo -hoo! Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks be to God. Here we grow again, as somebody said. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our blessing of the tithes and the offerings. If you would stand, it is our custom as we bless the gifts that God has given to this house. Pray with me. Loving and eternal God, we thank you that you are the God of abundance, the God of more than enough. We present these tithes, offerings, and monetary gifts to you, Lord, that you might use them to do your will to expand your kingdom, to edify your body. Now, God, continue to empower us, enlighten us, that we might go forth to do your will, that we might use these resources, God, in such a way that it would minister to the least of these and bless every giver, God, and all those who wanted to give. Bless their house, bless their finances, and bless them their hearts for being a cheerful giver. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. At this time, please receive our choir.
you all brought in the spirit of expectation. Come on, how many of you all came expecting, expecting to meet God, expecting to receive your blessing? I expect a miracle. Did you hear the words? I expect it. I'm not just hoping and wishing. I expect for God to do what God said he was going to do. Amen? How many of you all need to be blessed right now? How many of you all need a fresh outpouring of God's anointing and God's love right now? Come on, this is not the opportunity for you to act shy. If you expect it, you ought to give God praise like it's already done. We thank you, Lord. We expect a miracle every day, every day, every day. to give this choir a hand clap of appreciation for reminding us. transparent with you don't judge my praise this morning I had to literally convince myself to get out of the bed this morning the enemy wanted to keep me in the bed reminding me of all the things that I hadn't got accomplished trying to make my spirit heavy before worship but there's something about the power of expectation that God, if you can get my feet on the floor, I'm going to use every fiber of my being to give you praise, regardless of what's not done, regardless of my failures. I expect, 
I expect him to move. This ain't a game. I expect. I brought my spirit of expectation that when God wrote it in his word, it shall come to pass because you believe it. I believe Hebrews 11 that faith is the substance of things hoped for but the evidence is your expectation the evidence that God is real is your relationship all that you need to know this morning is that you walk under God's big blue sky there's nothing under the sun or the moon that God cannot promise to you and deliver on it I'm just here to remind a few people that no matter how long you have waited, if you brought your spirit of expectation, God said just believe it and receive it. Oh, that ain't the sermon, y'all. That's not the sermon, but it should be. <laughs> that if I expect it, He'll come through. He might not come when I want him, but he always, someone shout, he's always. <laughs> Can I get a few people to help me out? It's not your fault. I'm sorry, I brought my spirit of expectation here. I expect God to move. Come on and help him move. Move, spirit. Have your way, oh Lord. Have your way, oh God. Have your way. Oh, he's worthy. He's too good. Have your will, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, yes. Bless your name, oh God. I can't help myself. Jeremiah said it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. What God didn't give me in height, he gave me an expectation. What he didn't give me in intelligence, he gave me in blessing. And every chance I get, whether I got a mic in my hand or not, I'm going to give him his praise. Do I have three, just three undignified praises in this section? I just need two of y'all in this section. I just need one person in here to raise the roof like we came. Not out of form of tradition, but to shake the foundation of 1228 Will Bond Road. We serve the devil notice. Serve the devil notice. Ain't nobody playing with you this morning. Ain't nobody got time for that. Mission critical. Moment critical. That when we give God praise, the Bible says he inhabits. I know it's a few of us. I done spent too much time putting my face on. Making sure my clothes was ironed and pressed to get in God's presence and in front of all these folks and act undignified. But there's some folk out there like King David said when the Ark of the Covenant came down the street. Y'all know what the Ark of the Covenant is, right? It was God's earthly symbol that he was here in the midst. Y'all not going to help me. 
if the king can start to shout, buck and holler, not caring what the dignitaries or safe traps had to say about it, surely somebody said, move on, pastor. That's all they're going to do, pastor. They ready to go, pastor. And so am I, pastor. I hear you. I hear you. But thanks be to God. It's just such a joy to celebrate the Lord with you all. I feel sorry for all that don't understand how good God is. My God, my hope, my prayer for each of you all is that you do not have to be on your sick and death and dying bed that you don't have to be down to your last dime, that you don't have to be broken hearted and crushed in spirit before you realize how good your God has been. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. The condensed version. I want to preach to y'all for just a few moments. From the Jehanian Gospel, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. Go in and thank them, Debbie. You got every right, girl. Don't y'all worry about her. She getting hers. If you knew better, you'd get yours too. Verse 14. You are my friends if you do what I tell you to do. The word of the Lord. Friend is a word that we use every day. Most of the time, we use it in the wrong way. Now, you can look the word up again and again, but the dictionary doesn't know the meaning of friends. Somebody know where I'm going? If you ask me, I couldn't be much help because a friend is somebody you have to judge for yourself. Some are okay, and they treat you real cool. But some mistake kindness for being a fool. Friends. How many of us have them? <laughs> Friends, ones we can depend on. From the book of Houdini, chapter 1, verse 1. You ought to look at your name and say, you can make anything preach if you make it serious. Perhaps Houdini was inspired by the Holy Spirit to call our attention to the people we call our friends. I'm sure that we each have several differing opinions about what it means to be a friend. Today, we consider people who like our social media posts friends. We refer to people as our BFFs when they agree with us or they give us what we want. Social media has literally changed the social landscape of humanity. Heads hung like they're praying. Families share meals without speaking a word to one another because their face is in the book. Married couples judge how much they love one another by how many posts they make about their love. Come on, y'all. Nobody's that in love. Why do we always post the highlights and not the down times? Some of you all have hundreds, if not thousands, of friends in real life and in social media. But for me, y'all, and for all of my introverted friends, that's too many anniversaries, birthdays, congratulations, my condolences to keep up with. And if one of your friends don't read or like your post, you got the nerve to call somebody a fake friend. They're not fake, beloved. They were artificial from the beginning, virtual. It was literally their avatar you were interacting with, a digital replica of the real person. But when I need consoling, 
I can't do anything with a thumbs up emoji. If I'm experiencing grief and loss, a sad face and heart emojis is insufficient and lacking in human compassion. It should be called anti-social media. How many of you all have friends that you can call in the middle of the night? How many of you all have true friends that you could tell your deepest, darkest secrets to and they will not drag you or tell anybody else? How many of you all have friends that you can trust your children with? Several people may claim that they know you, especially if they, you have something they want or something they associate themselves with. But a true friend is someone who you can have confidence in. Can I say that one more time? A true friend is someone you can have confidence in. Someone who will not hold your faults against you, but won't let you become victim to those same faults. Can I work with it? Some of our friends have stuck closer to us than our biological families. When we turn to the text, up until this point in the story of Jesus, Jesus would speak to strangers in parables. He would use allegories, hidden stories with riddles behind them. Jesus used parables not to explain spiritual truths, but to conceal them from the people who he did not have relationship with. In Luke chapter 8, verse 10, Jesus explained, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. But I use parables to teach the others so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't understand. At this critical moment in his track to the cross, in a moment of transparency and vulnerability, Jesus wanted the disciples to know that there was more to having a relationship with God than just following the rules of the law. There's an intimacy with God. John 15 explains how Jesus invites us into that intimate relationship he and God the Father share. This is a relationship which is bonded and transmitted through the Holy Spirit. God's love for Jesus mirrors Jesus' love for his disciples and the world. The Father loves the Son. The Son loves his followers. His followers should love one another. This chain of loving relationships characterizes true friendship with God, his son, and God's family. Today, Jesus is calling us to be friends, but friends with benefits. Get your mind out of the gutter. Real friends that teach serve, disciple, encourage, inspire, and love. True friends of God share the same characteristics. What am I saying? I'm saying that friends of God know how to continually worship him no matter how they feel. Like Abraham who bowed down in the presence of God even though he didn't know how he was going to fulfill the promise. <laughs> We talked about King David who worshiped and danced with all of his might just because he recognized the presence of God. I wonder who in here has a reason to give God some undignified praise. I wonder how many of you are in here that God has done something for you that nobody else knows about. That he answered that secret prayer that you couldn't tell your best friend about. That he healed you in your body from that disease you were too embarrassed to share that he sent provision when you were too embarrassed and prideful to ask for help verse 11 says I have told you that so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete that means that your joy is incomplete without Christ 
I know some of you all have moments of happiness, but joy only comes from the presence of Christ. Can I deal with it? We try to find joy in all different kind of places. We go to the club, the jute joint, or the shot house. We go to the bars and we go out to movies trying to find this peace of some solitude and some type of solace from our suffering. But the word of God clearly tells us that you won't find joy at the bottom of a bottle. You won't find it in a pill. You won't find it in the smoke. You won't find it in the drink. You won't find it in someone's bedroom. The only way to have pure joy is to be in Christ. All these human self-medicating behaviors fall short of complete joy because the product of joy is love. Love is the crescendo of the fruit of the Spirit. And Jesus calls those who love him to obey him. He calls those who obey him disciples, which means if you obey Christ and do what Christ did, then you are his friend. That didn't resonate with nobody. I know I got three people on Facebook. Let me preach to them. If you do what Christ did, if you obey Christ, that makes you a friend of God. Not where you live. Not where you were born, not how much money you have, not how many degrees you have, not how many scriptures you can quote, not how many times you've been to church. If you keep his commandments, because all Jesus' friends do what he says do. And he tells us to love. Love is a commandment. In verse 10, Jesus reminds us to keep all of the commandments as the body of Christ the church loves to create and follow rules, but we often fail to observe the one commandment that Jesus said was the greatest of all. Can I remind us to love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind? Jesus said, this is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is just like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, and upon this commandment hang all the rest of the laws. So all you rule followers, God bless you, baby. But if the fruit of the Spirit is not your productivity, then you are falling short of God's friendship. To all of you biblical scholars and theologians, God bless you, honey. I'm so glad you can exegete and eisegete and tell me what the child DNA or American Greek version of a word is. But if you're not loving, it's tight. If you don't love, you can't call yourself a friend of God. Can we take a commercial break? I love how we have songs and we have uh, uh, cliches and, and phraseologies in the church. I'm, like, I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. Well, if you're a friend of God, then you ought to mirror his son. Being a friend of God means that you love people unconditionally. Being a friend of God means that you lift up the blood-stained banner. Being a friend of God means that you serve his people, that you feed his sheep, that you clothe the naked, that you give drink to the thirsty, that you open the eyes of the blind and set the captives free. Uh, true friendship true friendship in God is to love like God loves without a cause without an expectation of being repaid or even being recognized to love like God means to forgive someone shout forgive that means give before you trying to tell me pastor that I'm supposed to forgive people before they even know they need to be forgiven. That's right. You're trying to tell me I'm supposed to give before it's asked for. That's right. You mean to tell me I'm supposed to forgive before even anyone is going to recognize that I did give? God said if you're a true friend, don't you worry about man's acknowledgement and recognition. For God will repay. Jesus commissioned the church to act in love. He commanded us to be a house of prayer, an obedient people who will keep his commandments. The church 
is a place where the brokenhearted can find joy. A place where the lonely can abide. The long-suffering, the long-lasting love people who are lost can find solace here. We, the church, were created, called, and chosen by God to glorify God and serve God's people. I know this saying, go get your car keys and go get the house you wanted to live in, and you're going to be rich and famous. I just say that type of message, baby. But if you don't get the foundation of Christianity and being a friend of God, everything you build your house on is sand. But the rock... The rock of ages, the cornerstone that men rejected, says, I come that you might have life. You asking for too little, because when you my friend, I'm going to give you favors. That means when you ask for things, you ought to ask that it not only bless you, but it blesses your block, baby. You ought to ask that it not only bless you, but it blesses your entire family line. Not only that it blesses your city, but it blesses the whole world. Because when you're a friend of God, it comes with some benefits. There's a difference between how the world will treat you and how the friends of God will treat you. The world will love you. When you're popular, when it's beneficial, when they get what they want from you, they will build up around you and build monuments to you until, someone shot until, until you become a burden or a bore. But when you are a friend of Christ, the favor of God rests upon your life because favored friends Come with the benefits. Friends who act like Christ get supernatural preferential treatment. Friends who act like Christ are favored before the Lord, and the Lord will give them cows and houses they didn't build. A friend of God will make you get a job that you're not qualified for. Being a friend of God will benefit you a cure from ailments the doctors can't explain. Being a friend of God will give you favor that open doors that you didn't even know were there. Being God's friend will give you the benefits and give you gifts that will make room for you. It will get the attention of people who can make things happen for you. God's favor will allow the Holy Spirit to redeem, reveal the deep things of God. The text tells us that there is no greater love, no greater love than to give his life for his friends. Thanks be to God that Jesus went to the cross because he loved you. He hung there. He allowed himself to be lowered and ridiculed. He allowed himself to be spit upon. He allowed himself to be blasphemed. They made a mockery of your Lord. But he hung there because he loved you. He stayed right there because he loved you. Somebody shout, it wasn't the nail. It wasn't the Roman centurion's guard's spear. It was the love of Christ for all of his friends that were going to raise up and go ye therefore and make disciples teaching people in the ways and the work and the will of God, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the Son, and his Holy Spirit. That's a friend of God. I'm done, but I'll leave you with this. The favor of God doesn't cost you a thing. Unlike earthly friends who might harbor animosity, anterior motives, and want some payback, the secret that God sent Jesus to die in your stead is his favor. Although your faith you are saved by, grace alone, a grace that covers a multitude of your sin. 
a grace that forgives, a grace that heals, a grace that reveals, a grace that allows you to achieve what is humanly possible. Because God's grace and loving kindness towards you cannot be thwarted, cannot be stopped, cannot be hindered, cannot be brought to naught by any wicked scheme of this world of the next. No angel, no demon, no height, no depth, nothing can remove the favor of God from your life. When you do what Christ does, when you act like Christ, when you obey Christ, that makes you a Christian. Not coming and sitting in the house of the Lord. You got to have some fruit. You got to show some love. And I don't know who this is for, but you've been praying for long suffering. God's going to give you something to suffer along with. You've been praying for strength. He's given you something heavy to carry. You've been praying for patience. He's given you something to wait on. But the end result is the favor of the Lord. He will not leave you in the darkness. He will not walk away from you in the wilderness. He's with you lock and step. Every step of the way, he is illuminating your path. Thanks be to God that even if you're walking into desolate, dry desert places, the Lord is with you. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken noise, seed bag and bread. I wish I had three people to get excited about the friendly favor of God that rests upon your life right now. You ought to thank him for it. Thank God that he favored you in the midst of all the evil in the world. He favored you out of all the billions of people. He thought about you, beloved, out of all the denominations. He was thinking about me. Thank you, God, for your favor, for your love. Thank you, God, because we can't afford it. No matter how loud I get, no matter how much sweat spills from my brow, there is nothing you can do to afford the grace, the mercy, the favor, the forgiveness the healing, the love, the faithfulness of God. There is nothing, there is nothing in this world that can equate to God's goodness, God's love, God's friendship. You can have all the virtual friends you want to. You can be an influencer if you want to. Long as I got the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be all right. Thanks be to God, I might not get a heart, I might not get a like. Someone might not put up the praise hands. But as long as I got my Jesus, y'all not going to help me. Y'all not going to help me in here. I know some of y'all think this is a popularity contest. It don't matter if this place was packed to the gills, standing room only, or if it was just me in here. Those who have the favor of the Lord and are friends of God know how to give God praise in and out of season, in surplus and in lack death and in life, in sickness and in health, whether I got change in my pocket or my money is funny, whether I'm sick in my body, I know how to give him praise. Someone ought to shout, he's worthy. Come on, don't say it. Don't lie to yourself. Is he worthy? How many friends of God do we have out there? How many people who will stand up in the face of the world? How many people who will take the ridicule that you acting funny, that you think you better than everybody else? No, baby, I'm just realizing that men being a friend of God means I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm set free, I'm forgiven. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are delivered. We are set free. We are made whole. All God requires is that you walk to their end. Someone ought to shout, you better be careful what you pray for. Because unto whom much is given. You've been praying for a lot. You've been praying for more. 
God is ready. Are you ready to receive? Come on, if you're ready to receive what God has for you, the benefits of being a favored friend of God, I want you to rise to your feet. We're going to do something just a little different as we prepare for our communion here. I believe in activation and application. That means what is happening in the spiritual world should be replicated in the natural world. There are some of us who may need to be reminded that God is your friend. It might feel like you're alone. All the imperial evidence around you might point to you being abandoned. But someone wrote, as I look back, over my life, You know, Sister Vicki, after I look back over my life, I have overcome 100% of every obstacle I've been faced with. Y'all don't have to thank God for that. That should be a key reminder that you are a friend of God. He didn't have to preserve you. He didn't have to keep you. Come on, where are my people who will be real with me this morning? When I was acting as an accomplice in my own destruction. Baby, it was the devil back in 1990, but ever since then it's been you. And he still kept you. He kept you. When they were passing things around, you didn't know what is in it, but you partake, and he kept you. When you're driving down the highway, knowing you shouldn't be behind the wheel of that car, he kept you. That one time you forgot or refused, and he still protected you, he was there with you. I'm here to remind you this morning, as you cup your hands to receive what thus saith the Lord in your life, that God is still a miracle worker. He's still a way maker. He's still a giant killer. He still raises things from the dead. He still can heal you. He can turn your mind around. And he can heal your heart. If you want God to move today in your life, this is your opportunity with hands out cuffed, just like you would if you were at an ATM machine and you present that ATM machine with your card and your PIN number. Your hands extended outward. It's coming to the foundation and the firmament of heaven, saying, God, we come humbly as we know how to receive healing, God, for our minds, our bodies, our souls, God. Heal that broken heart, God. Touch that troubled mind, Lord. Those joints that are hurting, God, be a balm, Lord. Oh, that financial burden, God. How am I going to afford that next semester, Lord? I need a new car, God. The bills are backing up, God. I don't know what to do, Lord. But, God, we put it in your hands. We need a favor from you, God. God, those who are wanting to move on that gift, troubled with the visions of how things will come to pass, but you don't know how to get started. You don't know how to move. I pray right now that God through the power of the Holy Spirit, will open up your intellect, your understanding, and make the way plain for you. Those of you all who are waiting on a spouse, God said, believe me. Believe me. If I promised it, believe me. There's nothing you can do like Abraham and Sarah tried to do to help God's word out. Believe him. This is your opportunity.
Whatever you're asking God for right now, come on, as his friend, ask him right now. God, pour it into my life. You can trust me, God. You can trust me with whatever it is, Lord. You can trust me with the least of these, God. You can trust me with the blessings, God. You can trust me with the benefits of your kingdom, Lord. We receive it right now, Lord. And for all of us, God, that do not know Jesus in the pardon of our sins, we pray this corporate prayer. Say with me, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins, and I accept you in my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe if you believe that in your heart, that you've been set free, and now that you are a kingdom card-carrying member of God's kingdom, you are his friend. My next plea is for all of those who are looking to be baptized. Wasn't that a beautiful service today? Ocean, that water was cold, wasn't it? (laughs) Amen. She did so well. If you're seeking baptism to join in the family of God, this is your opportunity. If you're looking for a place to worship and to grow, won't you grow with us? You belong here. You belong here. Come and join what God is doing in this part of the body of Christ. My final request for each of us before we enter into communion and then receive our benediction. To lift up all the names that have been placed on our healed and set free list. Formerly known as the sick and confined list. But we declare healing. Deliverance, freedom. Sister Dorothy Davis. Sister Texana Washington. Sister Mary Davis. Sister Lola Booker. Sister Yolinda Utley. Sister Irene Baldwin. Sister Ruby Watson. Sister Dorothy Bell. Sister Lucille Moore. Sister Janet Curtis. Sister Mary Hood Saunders. Sister Andrea K. Moore, Sister Christine Stewart, Sister Tracy Taylor, Sister Sandra Gray, Sister Jean Hedgepath, Sister Marie Clark, Sister Deborah Wright, Sister Kim Brightman, Brother Jesse Lucas, Brother Ronald Wright, Sister Philip McClaymore, Sister Dorothy McKinney, Deaconess Margaret Green, Deacon Catherine Jeffries, Brother Tommy McLean, Brother Thomas Spence, Brother Alvis Walker, Brother Tony McDowell, Brother Robert Jones, Deacon Oscar Steele, Deacon Jimmy Evans, Deacon Carl Tony Wilson, Brother William Hodge, Brother Larry Norris, Brother Justin Marleek Hodge, Brother James Turk Sr., Brother Lamont Pardon, Brother Dennis Slade, Deacon Sam Wood Sr., Deacon Frank Reynolds, Brother Thomas Jackson and Sister Lillian Harrell, set free, God, and we lift you up. And if whoever is out there, if your name and your situation wasn't called out, know that your God is omniscient. He knows it all. He knows your name. He knows your need. And we lift you up. Amen. We're preparing to have communion together. As the music continually plays softly, I want to bless this bread and this cup. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the awesome opportunity to partake in this, your supper. We understand and we recognize that this is a symbol of your loving kindness for the world, of your sacrifice. Now, God, as we partake, We ask, God, that you remove everything that be not like you, that you create in us a clean spirit, 
Renew us, God, that we not be guilty of your blood sacrifice. Now bless this bread and bless this cup in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're able, we're going to take communion and receive our benediction at the same time. Will you please stand on your feet? The Bible records that on the night our Lord Jesus was to be betrayed, that he saw fit to sit and have a last meal with his friends, his favorite friends he called disciples. And at that meal, he took a piece of unleavened bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it. And he told his friends, I want you to eat this bread. But as often as you do it, do not forget what I'm about to do for you. Let us eat together. And in the same manner that he took the bread, he took the cup. And he blessed it. And he said, this cup represents my blood that will be shed for you. It's the blood of the new covenant. Meaning that I, being Christ, will be the last blood sacrifice required for sin. Then he gave it. And he said, as often as you drink this, never forget my sacrifice. Never forget that you are redeemed through my blood that runs warm down Calvary's veins. Let us all drink together. As we bring it down to a hum, please receive this benediction. Christ sends us forth to keep his commandments and to abide in his love. Love one another. Go forth to serve. And may God's favor be upon you. Share in God's mission. Bear fruit that will last. Now as you go down from this worshipful experience. Let us go forth back into God's mission of field in peace to witness to our community and the world that our Christ is alive. And the people of God said amen and amen. Let everybody say. Let me hear.